Welcome to Photofines. This week we've got just a short little abbreviated se um, session where we're going to talk about the Celebrate the Magic Castle projections. Now these started back in November, but uh, we haven't had a chance to have a look at them until somewhat recently. As you can see, uh, the castle projections start off relatively early with a sketch of Walt Disney as a sketcher on the castle itself, and we get to see Mickey Mouse right after that. Tinkerbell then comes along and splays some color all over the castle. Tinkerbell's kind of the, uh, the glue that holds this particular show together. She'll appear from time to time. Now, as you can tell, they did not shy away from using very bright colors. What they wanted to imply was a kind of painting ex uh, experience, as though the castle were being painted here and there with a giant brush and using lots of different animator colors. It's really kind of harking back to the uh, original purpose of the company uh, as an animation company. And they'll go ahead and splay kind of small characters throughout the castle and maybe even jumble it up on a few occasions, uh, really using the castle as a canvas onto which they can project different kinds of, of uh, animation. At a few points in the show, they do this sort of thing as well, where they give a kind of dreamy background to it and then a foreground image uh, that is more recognizably one of the characters from their movies, so Cinderella, in this case on her own castle, turning into Pinocchio, and then uh, Tiana and Naveen. They will uh, transition between scenes very often with this kind of swiping swoosh uh, where they change the castle's colors once again, perhaps even lasting a couple of seconds until it solidifies and into this kind of more bronze look in this particular case. From there, the castle morphs a few more times, again changing its colors as it goes. There we are, until we get to the Cheshire Cat, which kind of takes over. And I like the way that they use uh, the natural features of the castle, like the turrets, to provide an accent um, to what they're doing, the, the background. So it's not just a, a plain old canvas. They'll have things morphed onto the castle specifically, because that's the way the castle is shaped. Here, it's kind of a circus tent perhaps in honor of the new storybook circus around the corner. A couple of swirly designs for you that come up next on the castle. They really do a lot of, uh, of bright colors in this show, and it's impressive to watch, perhaps because of that. And then the colors will solidify down into, there we are, a construction crew building up Wreck-It Ralph. So um, he comes on and says, I'm going to wreck it. And then Fix-It Felix, as you can see him here, bounces around a little bit, fixing all of the windows that were broken on the castle. And then the bricks eventually come crashing down, and we see game over on the castle. It's a really neat effect. Then it's on to the Lion King. And as you can see, they show some uh, abstract stripes and colors, and then uh, some bounding animals, uh, like we saw at a few points throughout that movie. And then something that looks a little bit like it might have come from Philhar Magic, uh, with Simba dancing with the flowers there. And then this moment where uh, Simba and Timon and Pumbaa are crossing across a waterfall. All of it projected onto the castle. Castle then kind of turns to other stories. Here we've got uh, the Jungle Book, a couple of different animations from the Jungle Book, with the castle taking on that uh, jungle look to it. And then it's on to Romance. This one is particularly hard to photograph, but this is Lady and Tramp eating their spaghetti toward a kiss on the castle. Castle takes on more of an ivy feel to it, and then we go through some princesses. There's Snow White, as you can see now, as seen in uh, um, stained glass. And then Cinderella, Thumper in, in the background here, also some more Lion King. Beauty and the Beast, also as seen through stained glass. And then the Luminaria of Tangled, and that's Buzz Lightyear causing this turret to turn into a spaceship that kind of lifts off. That's from the old show. In fact, there are several scenes that are taken from the old show called Magic, the Memories, and You, except that in this case they don't show pictures of guests interacting on the streets. Uh, they just show the projections, uh, and, and it, the show doesn't change on a daily basis. Now, the projections are a lot brighter and crisper in this version than they were in Magic, the Memories, and You. Here you can see Captain Jack a lot better and with more clarity than you would have seen in the old show. They do keep as well the uh, skeleton dance skeletons from the old show. But they will of the wisps from Brave, as well as a couple of uh, show scenes from Brave as well, kind of take over the castle, um, allowing them to show whatever's most current in their library and in the theaters, which I think is a good way to use the technology. Back to these 
palettes of color, and there you see uh, Snow White highlighted in the middle, uh, then Dumbo highlighted in the middle. We'll go through several of these um, famous Disney uh, movies, and then the castle becomes kind of swirled with color in different ways. Pocahontas takes over briefly. It's really kind of a greatest hits of uh, Disney Disney movies, I'm trying to remind you of the Disney brand, I guess, as much as anything else. That's up, of course. And back to The Lion King one more time. Walt comes on for the end, the finale, as does Mickey Mouse, and kind of a world of color type um, uh, 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 palette of um, rainbow colors in the background, as you see Beauty and the Beast here, Aladdin and Jasmine, uh, Alice falling down the, the hole, uh, Pongo from 101 Dalmatians, and Tinkerbell making her reappearance. So as the show reaches its climax, you see these projected contrails turn into actual fireworks launching on the sides. It's done with remarkable um, alignment, and it just looks extremely realistic. It's a wonderful effect to see in real life. Now, in this case, the holiday tag came on afterwards, which involves a frosted over castle, uh, and then all of these poinsettias kind of growing and taking over the castle. And then a few views of the castle as different things, like a collection of wrapping presents, um, a collection of Christmas lights, here, another set of different kinds of Christmas lights, uh, wrapped up presents again, candy cane colors perhaps, um, more decorative, and then this is the 25th Cake Castle from when Walt Disney World turned 25, reproduced here quickly, uh, and then it quickly turns into the Gingerbread Castle, that's a wonderful looking effect, uh, before the show finally comes to its conclusion. So that brings us to the end of this week, and we um, want to call your attention uh, one more time to the somewhat new book on my plate. That's the top tips for visiting Tokyo Disney Resort, available on Kindle, electronically for $5.99 or $8.99 from createspace.com, coming to Amazon in a couple of weeks. This is an ideal book for anyone looking to go to Tokyo and not knowing uh, the customs or how to get to the resort and all of that. It spells it all out for you. The print version is 176 pages long. It's got some pictures in it as well. Thanks as always for your attention. We will catch you next time.